All right, back once again with Taylor Bradford of the Gloucester Daily Times. She joined us every week to give us the skinny on all things local. How you doing, Taylor? Good. How are you guys doing? Great. Good. Okay, right off the bat, Viva San Pedro or what? So the answer is it'll come in May. So we'll, we'll know whether or not St. Peter's Fiesta will happen this June in May. Um, I was able to speak with Joe, Joe Novella, the president of the St. Peter's Fiesta Committee, and he kind of mentioned that you know, they are starting the process as if they would any other year. Planning for the St. Peter's Fiesta takes months and months and months, and they usually start in January. And so they're going to start sending in the application, sending in the permit request, all that stuff now with the anticipation that it will happen. Um, but given the sense that we're in a pandemic, that we're still uncertain, that the vaccine rollouts are taking slower than they are expected, who knows, you know, when we'll hit that new normal and when gathering sizes will be allowed back to some sense of a, a festivity or, you know, St. Peter's size event. And so all of that will be determined in May. Um, Joe said that they're just waiting on the governor's orders to finally hit the button of go or no. Um, so we'll see then. Um, but he said, you know, he's hiring out vendors. But the, the big thing to know, and I'm sure people are wondering is, you know, would they push it back to September? Like we see like the Boston Marathon had kept pushing back their event um, with the hopes of still having it. He said that, you know, it's either in June or not at all, just because vendors um, might have contracts with other um, vendors, you know, and organizations and events that they might have planned. So it just would be too complicated. Um, to have that. So I'm sure that people are getting ready um, as they, they hear the news that it might happen, you know, whipping up um, some food ideas or trying to decide whether or not they're going to, to risk it out on the poll. But we will, we will wait and see in May. So we'll kind of just, we'll all sit and wait while, you know, Joe and his team just work very rigorously to get things up and running with the hopes of um, that annual event that i have yet to go to so oh I, my god I'm, oh taylor I'm so oh. eager to go when it does happen so yeah, uh, heather and i have had jello shots in the fridge for months we can't <laughs> exactly. wait yeah we're, still, we're hoarding jello shots actually <laughs> so wait so taylor is there any thought of it's either going to be the full-blown fiesta with carnival if they considered a scaled down version without the carnival or it's all or nothing I think it's all or nothing. Um, as of right now, I looked at some of the applications that he had filed with the city and it's all as if they would play, um, you know, the 23rd to the 27th. So like, right, the full on Fiesta um, dates are in all the applications. Now, maybe in May, they change their mind and they say, you know, we, we can still do the greasy pole or, you know, the, the sign boat, boat races, but we, we can't do, um, you know, the vendors down on Main Street. That type of stuff is still uncertain, but um, yeah, as of right now, it looks like it's all or nothing. But again, as we've expected from 2020, things can change on a dime. So we'll just right. have to wait and see. Gotcha. Okay. What is the latest with the uh, Cape Ann Marina's resort hearing? So the Cape Ann Marina public hearing was scheduled for Tuesday of this week. My computer was charged. I had some coffee in me. I was ready to watch <laughs> it um, and it got canceled. Um, so the Dominic family over at Cape Ann Marina had decided to postponed the public hearing as they digested what planning and development had discussed um, as the planning and development subcommittee standing committee of the city council which has three different councilors from the full committee full council on it had all voted against uh, request, uh, suggesting that the full council vote in favor of the special permits that Cape Ann Marina had requested to build this indoor storage unit over at 99A Essex Avenue. The big thing was the residents or the neighbors next to the marina were really frustrated by the fact that you know this uh, indoor storage unit could cause a lot of shadowing um, it would obstruct their views you know it would be a change to the neighborhood and it would really change the the character of the neighborhood and and so because of those different factors although the keeping marina had put a lot of money a lot of time a lot of resources into kind of showing that it wouldn't um there, there still is this kind of thought that it, it still might. And so the counselors voted against um, suggesting the, the permit request um, to the council. Um, and so with all of that, the Cape and Marina have decided to reflect, take some time, think about what their next steps are going to be, knowing that um, it wouldn't be a unanimous vote in their favor if it were to go for the full council. And there's a lot of people in opposition to it. There are also a lot of people in favor of it. So again, um, although these people had kind of said that they wouldn't vote for it, 
you know, you have a public hearing, then the full council votes on it, their minds might change, they might not. So we'll wait and see that has been pushed back to March 9th as of right now, and we'll see if it gets continued further on. Gotcha. Nice work there. Okay. And finally, a nice story to end on this week. The Community Impact Unit visited the Grace Center. Yeah. So Paul Bildo, our photographer, and I had the chance to actually go to Gloucester House earlier this week to meet up with the Grace Center and the Community Impact Unit as the Community Impact Unit served meals um, to different residents of Cape Ann who use resources and are part of the Grace Center programs. So they had uh, bought with different funding that they had received. They had bought food and meals from Goombadis and Scalafani's um, bakery had donated rolls um, to serve at this event. It was all very socially distant and masked, but even while people were separated by a distance, it was very evident that there's a lot of appreciation, love, camaraderie in the building as people kind of either sang or you had Jeremiah Castro, you know, um, yelling different fun Italian phrases, you know, asking if everyone knew Italian. As he um, does, yep. <laughs> people were yelling manja, you know, it's very exciting um, just to kind of feel some sense of normalcy, some sense of togetherness. Um, and I had opportunity to speak with some of the residents and just speaking of the praises of, um, especially Tito, um, who works in the community impact unit and his impact in their lives. Um, and, you know, I spoke with Tito and he had mentioned, you know, he had been kind of in their shoes at one point and someone had helped him through recovery. And so he wanted to give that back. Now, now this one particular woman I spoke with, you know, had a similar story. And now that she is on her feet, she's giving back to the community as well. So it's cool to see just kind of the, how it, it trickles down, um, kind of trickles down into a lot of different ways here in the city. Um, and so they're hoping to do this idea of, you know, serving food. Um, both supporting a, a restaurant and the community once a month. And the cool thing about the story is that Community Impact Unit has been around for about a year now, and they have done so much. Um, like a lot of different ideas, they're, they're serving the tiniest of tots to the oldest um, residents here in Cape Ann. It's cool to see what they've done. Um, and we'll actually have some stories coming soon about what they're going to be doing in the future. So some really exciting stuff, but uh, yeah, a heartfelt story of you know, just a lot of people um, coming together in a safe way to, to celebrate hospitality and the community. Yep, great, great pictures too. I love seeing those pictures, really mm. nice, yeah. And a tip of the cap to Lenny and Dottie Linquata for allowing the Grace Center to move into the Gloucester House this winter Yeah, that well, was so. so, that was great, yeah. Taylor, we'll catch up with you next week. Sounds great, have a great weekend. Happy Valentine's Day. Same to you. Same to you. Viva Fever. <laughs>